Yeah, another way to look at this is working on the head and heart and the gut. Now, awareness has no standard, so all those fabrications are arbitrary, but a lot of traditions say, oh, you first you wake up in the head, that's wisdom. Vipassana path. Then you wake up in the heart with compassion. You throw up the emptiness with the compassion. That's why a lot of people who practice awareness of awareness practice, they say that's the practice where you open up your heart. That's stage two. Third stage is waking up in the gut. Now, when you say waking up in the gut, it's an embodied moment-to-moment -moment experience. This thing is quote-unquote physical, actually it transcends physical and mental and spiritual and metaphysical. But when you open up your realization and truth is known through the quote-unquote gut, it feels like the entire universe is your dharma body. Your body by your meat suit feels like a mosquito that's flying around and landing on your natural state. The infinite bra, which is formless, dimensionless, luminous, with no boundaries or separations. All the humans that I see, all the objects, they're all just mosquitoes. And they're all equal footing. I could be walking around and I could feel like the sky is my new quote unquote dharma body. Dhammakaya, Dhamma Badi. Why is it the Dhamma mind or the Dhamma consciousness? Because again, this is so visceral and embodied that it's not something that's conceptual or even spiritual. Definitely not theoretical. That's why people say before enlightenment, you try wood and carry water. During enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. After enlightenment, you chop wood and carry water. Why isn't it during enlightenment, you read books? After enlightenment, you read books? You theorize about philosophy. Why? Because just washing the dishes is infinitely times deeper and more mind-fucking than reading the most mind-blowing philosophy or reading the most mind-blowing uh, religious text or listen to the most mind-blowing symphony or perceive the most mind-blowing art. That's how powerful this thing is. You cannot possibly imagine it. It's so profound. But everyone can experience it. Everyone is experiencing it. This is why I always say this work is closer weightlifting and then art of philosophy. You're flexing the universe, but that's only mid-path. When you do jhanas and samadhis, we let that go too. This is the only work that allows you to straight down to nothingness while bulking up to infinity. Somebody said to me today, Frank, why didn't you take the next logical step, which is to go on roids? I'm like, no, this is the next logical step for any human. But paradoxically, you're that already. Why would you want to be a localized pile of meat? We can literally become the entire universe with no location. Everything is just interpenetrating, interconnected. Reality penetrating itself without a condom through and through, without a speck of space in between. Now, when you wake up in the gut, you include both the heart and the head. So there's absolutely no distinctions at all or separation between head, heart, and gut. In violin, when I practice, first you read the music, you learn it with the mind, with the intellect. You try to get the fingerings down. Learn the notes with the brain, quote unquote brain. <laughs> there is no brain in my field of perception. Second of all, you transfer that knowledge into the heart. 
into the emotional aspect of your being by applying emotions and feelings. Without having to learn the piece intellectually, you won't be able to apply feelings without making a mistake. Third level, you transfer that knowledge further down into the brain steam. So if you don't want to look at the aspect of a brain, then it's first the cortex, the neocortex. Second, the limbic system responsible for emotions and feelings. Then third, brainstem responsible for cortical motor movements. But guess what? Ironically, there's more neurons in the brainstem than in the cortex. Ta-da! <laughs> Awakening could also be analogous to that kind of process. Now, don't take those levels too seriously. There's no level to enlightenment, but there are levels of awakening, levels of consciousness. Even with the different sections, levels of the brain. See, brains from direct experience don't produce consciousness. And when you get to the brainstem, any kind of knowledge that you try to apply becomes experiential, embodied. And when you try to think about it intellectually, you actually fuck up. You don't try to feel the music anymore. All that's pretentious. It just comes out, part of the flow, the cosmic flow. Actually, enlightenment goes even beyond the flow because you're not separated from the flow. Again, you're this cosmic storm and everything's rolled into this cosmic storm, including body, mind, consciousness, awareness, witness, God consciousness, Brahman, Atman, Anatta, all that is rolled into this cosmic storm without a center, without an eye because the observer is never apart from the observation and the observed. All part of the transient process of impermanence. But when you go beyond even that, there's not even a process for cause and effect because you transcend time and space. Enlightenment work is just like playing or learning an instrument or any other skills. You gotta go through the process. The difference is, this is a cosmic, cosmic instrument. God, the DJ in you itself. With the whole universe, every single sensation throughout the whole universe, vibrating in synchrony. Where there's no distinction between musicians, all the music in the world, and all the instruments in the world, throughout all the multiverses because there are just different reconfigurations of the same vibration of emptiness that transcends space, time, form, and even emptiness itself. In our modern society, where we emphasize on the intellect, the consciousness, the seed of consciousness is in the head. In ancient Asian countries, it's in the heart. That's why uh, the word mind actually means heart mind in Chinese. In the ancient civilizations, like uh, Egyptians, it's in the gut or in the stomach. All of them are right, but at the same time, none of them are right because again, Awareness has no center because it has no locations. It's not local. But you can extrapolate from the infinite pool of consciousness and then psh, concentrate it on a spot. That's what mindfulness is about. That's why the do nothing meditation, where you just abide in the Buddha mind, requires consciousness. Um, you just relax and let go without the character trying to pay attention. See, because even the intention of trying to meditate, trying to pay attention, and trying to fabricate awareness are just sensations happening by themselves that's taking credit for infinity that's already aware of itself. When you dissolve even the observer, See, in my field of experience, no one's watching anybody else. There's no watcher, no seer, no hearer. It's absurd to think that characters inside a video game is aware 
of other characters. Only that which creates the game is comprehending itself as itself, through itself. The one unified sense store that transcends even perception. And again, this is not just an analogy, you can actually experience that and abide in it. Why? Because you are that. Ta -da! <laughs> and then you go beyond even that. Transcend the Brahman, the eternalism of absolutism, and the nothingness of nihilism and emptiness of Buddhism. Go beyond the beyond, transcend the transcendence. Let go of the enlightenment itself. And then you wake up in the gut. Here's an analogy using video games to describe my three levels to awakening. First, you are a character, a video game character inside the game, separate with all the other characters without knowing that you are inside the game. Second level, you become the screen, the all-knowing witness, detached from the game and the character, the God consciousness. Third level, the screen and all the characters and the game in the environment merged into one indistinguishable whole. You also the nothing that manifests the entire game and all variations of all the games and all the characters simultaneously throughout the universe.